to say two words just thank you Lord thank you. thank you for just being who you are without any assistance all by yourself we thank you that you are everything and anything that we need Father we lift our voice just to say we appreciate you we adore you we honor you, we recognize you, we acknowledge you. Father, we just thank you for being who you are, Father. And we just bless your name this morning. We lift our voices just to sing praises unto your name, Father. And just to let you know we appreciate you, we love you. Father, we thank just uh, being present in our lives, Father, we, we look at what we ourselves in the flesh have done and then we look at what you've done through the spirit and we thank you father for being a spiritual presence in our life father for tapping us and letting us know which direction to go and giving us sight and, and giving us a light in the dark world and father being in fellowship with us and then father we thank you for all of the blessings that we see with our eyes but most importantly all of the things that we overlook just being focused on ourselves father we thank you for the blessings we have not acknowledged we thank you for the things that you've done that we didn't see we thank you for lifting us up when we were torn down we thank you for being alive today and recognizing that death may be around us but you are still alive you got up from the grave father with all power in your hands and we thank you that right now the blood that's flowing still warm in our veins is because you live with ours, but it's all yours. And we thank you for letting us just flow through us, letting us recognize that all by ourselves as individuals, that's all we are. But when we come together as one, we are the body of Christ. And we thank you that you are the author and the finisher of our faith. We lift your name up this morning and we give you all the praise that is due unto thee. Father, we just ask as we go further into this worship service, Father, 
We just ask that you be present with us. You told us if two or three of us would come together, you would be in our midst. It's more than two and three this morning, and we know you're already here. Prepare our ears to receive the message that you place on your under-shepherd this morning. Give him strength to give it to us straight and give it to us strong. And we ask all of these blessings in the name of your son, Christ Jesus, and for his sake we ask it. Amen.
give God some praise. Come on, let's give God some praise. Are there any worshipers in the house? Come on, let's give God some praise. Has God done anything for you? Has God done anything for you? If God has done something for you, you ought to wave your hand. If God has done anything for you, you ought to tell the Lord, thank you. If God has done anything for you, you ought to stand up on your feet and say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. You brought me from a mighty long way. You brought me. You didn't forget about me. Somebody ought to tell God, thank you. Because today, 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 God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We celebrate the reason. Oh, go ahead and worship. Go ahead and worship. Go ahead and worship. This is a space for worship. Come on. Come on. Come on. Scripture says if you don't praise the Lord, then the Lord will send some rocks to cry out. Oh, hallelujah. We bless God for who God is, and we bless God for what God has done. We are praising God for resurrection season, in that those things that were dead, because of God, because of his darling son Jesus those things that were dead they now live again so brothers and sisters whatever you face whatever dead situation you face because we serve a living God it lives again we want to pause just for a word of prayer um, as we move forward into word of God. I know that this is a different Easter Sunday. We're used to the church being full, uh, but we, we just thank God that people are in the building. We praise God that the pandemic has not had the last say-so over Pleasant Green, and that is something to be thankful for. I think we ought to just give God a great big and clap of praise, amen. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, there is a text I love to preach on when it comes to Resurrection Sunday. So if you all would go with me to that text, it's hard to let this text go. I love Matthew 28. We're going to read Matthew 28, and we're going to read Matthew 28. And then we're going, we're going to read 1 through 10. I'm going to read from the New Revised Standard Version. It reads on this wise. It says, After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, 
for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who is crucified. He's not here. But he, what he says is he's risen. And he said, come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell the disciples he has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, and they ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and they worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Amen. Just for a moment of better, I want to use for a framework for the time that we have together the title, He is Risen. He is Risen. Brothers and sisters, this is a day that we celebrate, and as we celebrate this day, we understand that this day did not come uh, without heartache, without headache, and without depression. This day was a day that came, brothers and sisters, after the people of God suffered anxiety, after they suffered angst, and after they suffered the fact that their Savior had now died. This was a somber time. And brothers and sisters, this uh, has been a time for the church that perhaps has been a somber time. As we've not been able to appreciate the church building and appreciate the cushion pews, this has been a somber time. Such is the tone of our text as it starts out at a rather somber mood as Mary Magdalene and the other Mary get up early on Sunday morning to go to the grotto to see uh, what they thought would be a dead, beaten, and broken body of Jesus Christ. Nevertheless, it was something about the faithfulness of these women that even in the crunch of crisis, even in the thick of dilemma, their conviction was that although the tomb was empty, their hope was full. And I want somebody to know today, brothers and sisters, that although the tomb is empty, and because the tomb is empty, one of the things that we want to celebrate on today that is our faith is full. And I want to pause parenthetically and suggest to you that when you are headed to see Jesus, you better expect to see a miracle happen. When you are headed to see the Lord, when you are on your way to where Jesus is, brothers and sisters, whether you are logging in or whether you are calling up, 
brothers and sisters, whether you are postured in the cushion pews of the church, whether, brothers and sisters, you've got to understand that when you are headed to see Jesus, you ought to expect a supernatural occurrence that happens on your way. Brothers and sisters, to many of us, as we head to where Jesus is, we see a sepulcher. We see a tomb that holds dead bodies. Uh, and it causes us to have a dead praise. When we head uh, to the tomb, brothers and sisters, uh, we have a, a dead praise and a somber look, a dead personality and a dead sense of forgiving, a dead beat devotion, dead in our discipleship, dead in our deed of giving. Brothers and sisters, but when you head somewhere with an anticipation of seeing Jesus, you ought to expect some stones to be rolled away in your life. You ought to expect the tomb to be empty. And when the tomb is empty, that ought to make you shout because, brothers and sisters, your faith ought to be full because God got Jesus up out of the grave. Although this passage starts out as somewhat a funeral procession, it is what, uh, brothers and sisters, again, a somber situation. This was a situation that sounded like doom and gloom. It seemed like the faith that hinged upon the words of our Savior had now been dissolved by the nails that had been pounded through the palms of his hands. Brothers and sisters, it seemed like our blessed assurance had been nullified by the spikes that had been driven through his feet and his humiliating death on the cross. But can I encourage someone in here today that sometimes what may seem like doom and gloom for you in the hands of an omnipotent and omniscient God, God can cause what you thought to be doom to be your deliverance. Sometimes God uses those things that might seem like doom so that God can defend our faith. Sometimes God moves in mysterious ways so that we can be brothers and sisters delivered by God. Because God uh, was working on our behalf, uh, the tragedy, and he was working on our behalf, uh, on the behalf of the tragedy of the cross. What looks like tragedy on the cross now becomes triumph. Brothers and sisters, this is a mighty word for someone today that when you think that it is finished, God can move you to a place of finale. Brothers and sisters, what seems like is over, God can move you if you put your situations in God's hands. Brothers and sisters, what we must understand about the text is that when it is finished for us, it is just the beginning for God. When it is finished for us, brothers and sisters, it is a new a overture for God. The story quickly heightens as they are on their way to anoint Jesus. There were two supernatural occurrences that take place. The text says that a great earthquake occurs. There is megas in the Greek, meaning that a terrible, severe, or a violent earthquake ensues. From there, the story becomes a bit more eerie and uncanny as the angel of the Lord appears and the stone which covered the tomb where Jesus was laid, all of a sudden it was rolled away. And you have to be careful with this text because you'll miss something. But before I go further into this text, I want to pause because 
even the first two verses, they bless me because it helps me to recognize that no matter how bad yesterday was, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you ought to expect, you ought to get up expecting to see the Savior. No matter how bad yesterday was, no matter what happened on yesterday, no matter how bad issues happened, brothers and sisters, you ought to get up today expecting to see God and see God move on your behalf. The past, the past few hours were filled with despair. Their past few hours were filled with despondency and their past few hours were filled with desperation. Brothers and sisters, they drank tears for water. The disciples were distressed and disturbed and distraught by the violent death of Jesus. But yet these two faithful female followers teach us something valuable about God. God will bless you. Brothers and sisters, what I want to share with you is that if you make it through the past and arrive safely at your today, Expect to see Christ even in your emptiness. I want to say it again, brothers and sisters, even though you arrive at an empty tomb, the Lord can show up, the Lord can show out, and God can do something miraculous in your life. Even though what you're coming through, you feel like it's empty, God can still show up and God can still give meaning meaningfulness to your life and I want to encourage us today that while this pandemic has swept through our world it has affected Pleasant Green although it has overwhelmed the CDC it is not overwhelmed by the CDC somebody saying well Reverend Letcher what do you mean while it has overwhelmed the Center for Disease Control it has not overcome Christ's divine control I don't know about you but I find encouragement in knowing that he's got the whole world in his hands brothers and sisters no matter what's going on in your life, God has the whole world in his hands. God can move even through the situations that you're facing right now. God has the whole world in his hands. That ought to give you a reason to shout because as Mary and Mary stood in an empty tomb, they yet still recognized the work of Jesus Christ. While church buildings are yet opening up and while they are empty all over the world, uh, brothers and sisters, we can recognize that the un in inhabilitated, uh, brothers and sisters, the unrestrained power of God, uh, we, can, uh, we can recognize that God still moves when nobody else is moving. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, we've got to get to a space where we understand that God is working on our behalf. Somebody's missing their shout. Jesus works even though you might not be able, uh, even though you're standing in a tomb that is designed for doom and gloom. And the finality is yet working. Brothers and sisters, God is still working for your redemption, God is still working for your liberation, and God is still working for your eternal life. I want to stretch your faith just a little bit. I want to stretch your faith just a little bit. The women showed up to the tomb to see Christ one way, but when they got there, he appeared to them another way. I want to say it one more time, brothers and sisters, they showed up to see the Lord one way. But when they got there, Christ showed up another way. Don't miss it. Sometimes Christ will show up in your life in an unexpected, unanticipated, 
unpredicted, unprecedented, unforeseen, and unconventional manner, but you must be prepared to have an encounter with Christ no matter how God chooses to show up. My brothers and sisters, this was no stroke of luck. This was no happenstance. This was no co coincidence or accident that while they were uh, on their way to see Jesus, an earthquake happened. And I agree with Pablo Picasso, as he once said, I don't believe in accidents. There are only encounters in history. And I'm persuaded that it was a divinely designed encounter that as they approach the tomb, an earthquake strikes at such a symbolic time and as they approach the divine, a disaster takes place. And I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, sometimes that as you move closer to God and as you desire to get close to the Lord, sometimes as you move closer to the divine, sometimes a disaster might take place. I want you to understand that Satan sees that you're trying to get closer to God. Satan sees that you're trying to walk with God, but at the same time, Satan will throw a monkey wrench in your plans. Just today, brothers and sisters, I was on my way to the house of God. I got 15 minutes out, I forgot my robe. I went back and went again. I saw that I left my computer. Brothers and sisters, as I was trying to get closer to God, Satan was trying to move me farther away from him. What I share with you on this day is that when you desire to get close to God, Satan wants to move you further away from him. When you get close to God, when you get closer to the divine, a disaster takes place. So I began to read and reread the text, and I saw verse 2 where it says, And behold, behold is a key word here that simply implies pay attention. Sometimes God is talking to us and God is saying, Behold. There's a lot of times that God is talking to us and God is saying, behold. God is saying, behold, because God is trying to get us to pay attention because there is something that is about to happen in our lives that God does not want us to miss. It just seems like to me God spoke said let there be light it just seems like that same God can speak and say behold and the earth can begin to quake and to move and my brothers and sisters an earthquake is a flagrantly noticeable uh, phenomenon an earthquake is impossible to ignore and as we get close to celebrating the Prince of Peace even in uh, the shadows of a pandemic, brothers and sisters, uh, this puts us at, at a place where we ought to realize that God is still moving right now. And my brothers and sisters, for many of us, it takes an earthquake, it takes us being shaken up for God to get our attention. And sometimes, brothers and sisters, it might take a pandemic for God to move us to where God wants us to be. Sometimes, sometimes God has to jump in and into our lives and interrupt normalcy and the normalcy of our lives with a new normal before we recognize the omnipotent power of God. That isn't enough when Jesus died on the cross. Matthew says again that there was a great earthquake. Brothers and sisters, I think this is important for us to realize 
even though there is a great earthquake, one of the things that I suggest to you is that even though the things of life are shaken up, even though we are shaken up, brothers and sisters, God is still on the throne. David says it like this. And brothers and sisters, one of the things before we talk about David, the narrative seems to share with us uh, that storms uh, perhaps rise and winds blow, but brothers and sisters, we can hold on to the steadiness of God. I'm done, I'm moving to my close, but one of the things that I share with you is, is that God again rules and super rules over natural and the spiritual. I can hang my hat on the hermeneutical platform around the earthquake and just go ahead and shout because the earthquake dislodged the stone that sealed the tomb of Christ. But the reality is that the earthquake is not the reason for the empty tomb. But the empty tomb is the reason for the earthquake. I want to say it once again. The earthquake was not the reason for the empty tomb. But the empty tomb was the reason for the earthquake. It is because Jesus lives is that the reason that the stone was rolled away because of the earthquake. And I share this with you, brothers and sisters, as I look at uh, science. I am one who believes in science, but I am also one who believes that God and science, they correspond. I say that, brothers and sisters, uh, as I think about uh, the Big Bang Theory. I, I think about the Big Bang Theory. Y'all know I'm a nerd. I watch all kind of National Geographic. I watched a, a series. They were talking about the Big Bang Theory, and the Big Bang Theory says that there was an explosion out in outer space in the cosmos that caused human life to begin. I don't doubt that. But what they did not say is that when Jesus or when God said, let there be light, the Big Bang exploded. Do I have any witnesses here? I'm saying that while this might have hold some truth, I say that the Almighty that it was the Almighty that caused the Big Bang theory. It just seems like to me that the same God that spoke in the beginning and said, let there be light and the sun ignited is the same God that says, behold, and all the earth begins to quirk and quake and capture the attention of the world. The seasoned preacher used to say it like this, that God can speak and man will lay down and die. And the same God can speak, and that same man will get up and live again. It brings me to a short point in that resurrection, through resurrection, that which was in this place where they were decomposed. Brothers and sisters, uh, resurrection brings us to a place where God brings those who uh, are dying back to life. Matthew 27, Jesus died until the sun refused to shine. The sun refused to shine in the middle of the day. The sun refused to shine for three days hours. Matthew 27 and 51, Jesus died until the curtain of the sanctuary was torn from two, from top to bottom. Jesus died until he brought other folks back to life 
in Matthew 27. Brothers and sisters, Jesus died. But oh, brothers and sisters, the thing that I'm happy about, that as he died, he didn't stay dead. As Jesus died, he rose again. He rose again. And because Jesus died, because Jesus lived, we live and we face tomorrow. There's an effect of this earthquake. And when things shift, doors are open. Somebody ought to say, thanks be to God, because Jesus lived, doors are open. When Jesus comes into our life, and brothers and sisters, we experience earthquakes, we can understand that Jesus changes our lives. Verse 2 arrests me because he says that there was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and set up on it. Jesus has the victory. Jesus Christ's work on the cross is finished. But our work here at Pleasant Green is not done. Our salvation is now also eternal and our life is everlasting because of Christ's finished work on the cross, but the work that we have to do here is still ongoing. And I thank God for his finished work because what scripture says, his work is eternal. Our salvation is eternal. In other words, brothers and sisters, kings and kingdoms rise and fall, but praise God for the report for the present pleasant parishioners here is that Jesus reigns. Luke 1, 33 says, he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom shall be no end. Isaiah 40 and 28 says, How hast thou not heard, thou not known, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator, the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Psalm 103 and 17 says, But the loving kindness of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. Brothers and sisters, we serve a risen God. And because Christ has risen, we are saved. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is is open.
How many know that Jesus will fix it? No matter what your issue is, no matter what you face, we serve a God who is able to fix even a dying situation. Brothers and sisters, we are thankful to God. Let's give God a rousing round of applause for We just want to celebrate, um, we want to celebrate the life of Pleasant Green. Um, if you would, let's just celebrate uh, the life of our music ministry. Come on, let's celebrate them. Uh, through, through this pandemic, they have been faithful. And we thank God for them as they have continued to usher us into the presence of God with their singing and also their faithfulness. I just want to just celebrate them again. Thank God for them. Amen. Amen. 
as we prepare to leave, um, we definitely want to um, just celebrate our guests. If you are a guest of Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church, we would love for you to stand so that we can recognize you. Amen. If you are a guest of Pleasant Green, I want you to stand. I know we rusty pleasant parishioners, but let's try it. We thank God for you, and we praise God for you being in our presence. And because you are here, we want to welcome you pleasant green style by saying together, you are welcome. Amen. Thank God again for our guests. I see our neighbors uh, here, and we just want to just uh, thank God for them. Uh, they have embraced us as we have come into the neighborhood. Uh, we thank God for our neighbors. We got Dodrick with us, and uh, and we 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 got uh, the family. Y'all don't don't. I, I hope I don't get your names wrong, but I just bless God for you being here. This is my neighbors right over there. Amen. Carrie has been a blessing to me, and she's been talking about the Lord, and we just thank God for the connection that we have uh, with you. Amen. And those little children back there, they got their headsets on, and that's Avery's friends. Look at her. She's looking back at them right now. She want to hurry up and get back there with them. Amen. We thank God for them, and we thank God for all of our guests, and we praise God for you. We pray that this is not your last time visiting. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're thankful. We're thankful. Brothers and sisters, as we move forward into our worship service, uh, we want to pray uh, as we uh, consider our, the Lord's Supper. Let's pause for a word of prayer. God, you are so gracious. We thank you for who you are, and we thank you for what you have done. God, we pray now that as we move into this first Sunday, God, we remember what it means to partake in the Lord's Supper. Lord God, we pray that uh, we bring glory to you. And Lord God, we pray that as we partake in this Lord's Supper, we don't do it unworthily. God, we are all unworthy, but Lord God, don't allow us to do it unworthily. This is in Jesus' name we pray. We lift up your name. Thank God and amen. Brothers and sisters, we're doing it just a little bit differently this Sunday. Uh, I hope all of you have your packets. If you don't have a packet, we have a, uh, a deacon, uh, a trustee, or an usher that will service you. If you don't have a Lord's Supper packet, raise your hand if you need a Lord's Supper packet. It's kind of like a Lunchable this time around. <laughs> But the Lord said, it's not how you do it, it's just when you do it. Scripture reads to us. Does everyone have a packet? If you don't have a packet, wave your hand. All right, there's one over here that does not have a packet. and partners of PG. What scripture says in Matthew 26, 26 through 28, says, while they were eating, Jesus took the bread, 
this little thing right here, this is the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, this is the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Brothers and sisters, as we are in this first stage of returning to the building, let us commune together in worship. Thank you for being faithful in your stewardship to God. Thank you for being faithful in your stewardship to God. If you want to be a blessing to Pleasant Green, I want to share a few ways you can do that as we dismiss. Brothers and sisters, you can be a blessing to Pleasant Green a couple of ways. First of all, you can be a blessing to Pleasant Green if you log on to our website at www mbcstl.org www.pgmbc.stl.org There's no dot between www.pgmbc. Uh, no I've been saying this too long. Let me let me say it one more time. www dot pgmbc stl dot org www dot pgmbc stl dot org click on to our giving tab you can give uh, to the ministry of pleasant green there we thank you for that also brothers and sisters you can also give by sending a check or a money order uh, to the physical site uh, at R-E-V G-H Pruitt um, what was that? 1220. I'm missing all the way up today 
I'm just so excited to be back in the house of God. I'm just missing all the way up. 1220, R-E-D-G-H Pruitt Place. R-E-D-G-H Pruitt Place. Uh, 1220, R-E-D-G-H Pruitt Place, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. Amen. You can Amen. give that way. Or, brothers and sisters, if you brought uh, a gift uh, and you want to give today with what is in your hand that was on your heart, as you leave out the doors, we have some containers at the back, and our deacons and trustees will take your gift at the back door. So we appreciate your generosity. Thank you for what you have come here to do, worship and to give. Amen? Amen. 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 With that being said, with that being said, let us pray out of here. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of God's glory with exceedingly joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Let us all say together. Amen. Amen.